Hey, what's up YouTube? It's me, Sarah, and today I'm going to be talking about my best tips for applying SPF. This was such an important topic that I felt like, why not make a whole video talking about some important reminders and tips when it comes to applying sunscreen. This is the most important step of your skincare routine. 80% of premature aging is because of the sun, and if you're not protecting your skin, you're really not doing yourself any justice. So in this video, I hope that these tips Tips that I provide y'all will help encourage y'all to find the right SPF but most importantly wear it every single day because something is better than nothing. So first, how much to apply for your face, neck, and chest? So I get this question a lot in my normal day-to-day -day life. How much sunscreen should you be applying so that you can receive the adequate protection and achieve the SPF rating that's listed on the bottle? My rule of thumb is typically two or more finger lengths of sunscreen for your face. For your neck, one whole finger length and for your chest, one or two finger lengths. So it also depends on the formulation of the SPF. If your sunscreen is very liquidy and runny, I would recommend adding one more finger length per section that I just mentioned. So instead of two finger lengths for your face, maybe add a third one. And same thing with your neck, instead of just one, you could have two finger lengths, and then for your chest, you could have two or three, okay? It really depends on the formulation, but more is better than less in this case. And if your sunscreen comes out in like a pump application, then I like to apply at least this much, at least this much, to my face area, I add another pump for my neck, two more pumps of my sunscreen to my chest area. So I really like to make sure that I evenly coat every area that is especially exposed to the sun. Even your ears, if you know your ears are going to be exposed, definitely cover them up. I know if you have an office job, it may not seem that important, but it's better to be safe than sorry, so you may as well just apply it on your ears and whatever other exposed area you have, especially if you're gonna be near a window. My next tip talks about what happens if your SPF pills up quickly? If you notice pilling when it comes to your SPF, like it starts getting like flaky or balling up on your face, then I would recommend start with a small area at a time. So a small amount per area and then work your way down. And then you can go back in and start layering that sunscreen. If you apply too much at once, you're gonna be more prone to pilling. So start small, make sure that your previous skincare that you applied is, is absorbed, and then start working with your SPF. You know, I don't experience pilling too often when it comes to my sunscreens, but if I do happen to experience pilling, I make sure that I start slow and I take my time with small amounts per area of my face, and then I don't notice as much pilling. So that's what I would recommend, and then after you're done with that base layer of SPF, then you can go back in and start layering a little bit more, but allow it to dry up a little bit before applying more on top of it. And if you notice it's just pills regardless, no matter how much you put on at a time, then maybe start searching for a better SPF with a better formulation that doesn't pill as much because I don't notice pilling very often, but if you're combating pilling on a day-to-day -day basis, that can definitely take away from the whole SPF experience. It may make you not want to use SPF, which we definitely don't want. So maybe start shopping around a little bit more for a formulation that doesn't do that. My next tip talks about applying SPF on your body. So you definitely want to apply sunscreen all over. So every part of your body should be having some sort of sun protection. So your ears, your hands, your feet, all of that. I do commonly get asked about um, sunscreen sprays. They're not bad. I don't have anything super against sunscreen sprays. I mean, they're better than nothing, but they are tricky to apply. If you are going to be outdoors all day, if you are going to be at the beach under direct sunlight for extended periods of time, then what I would actually recommend that you do is before you even leave the house, apply a base layer of physical physical sunscreen, like an actual lotion all over your body, let that absorb, 
and then whenever you head to the beach and when you get there then you can do a spray to, to reapply. The reason I recommend this is because when you get to the beach and if you haven't already put SPF on, you could be sweating, you may not even apply the layers of SPF evenly across your body. So to save me time and effort from having to do it when I get to the beach, I do a base layer all over my body with my SPF lotion, let it set, then I leave the house, and then when I get to the beach, after like an hour or so, then I reapply. I could use a spray, but it really depends on like kind of personal preference. But I feel like because it's so hot and it is summertime, the safe bet is to do it before you leave the house and make sure you have a good base layer to really protect your skin. Sprays are tricky in the way where they may not get applied evenly. You know, when you're spraying your body, the wind can take away what you just sprayed out and you may be getting like speckles of SPF compared to an even layer. Just make sure you go over the same areas a few times and you rub it into your skin so you know for a fact that that SPF has reached those parts. So don't just spray it and think that you're okay. So spray it in multiple layers, go over it a few times, and then rub it into your skin, and that will be a much better protection method than just spraying it once and being done with it. My next tip is a very important one as well, and it is reapplication. So you wanna make sure that you are reapplying your SPF at least every two hours. So when I know I'm gonna be outdoors for a long time, like if I'm at that beach, I make sure to reapply like every hour because it's so hot out. This, the UV index is really high. Even though I already have SPF on and I have my sun hat and I seek shade and all this other extra sun protective measures in place, it's still important to reapply. So reapplication is so important. So if you know you're gonna be outside all day, check the UV index, use your good judgment, but still reapply apply. Even if you're not under direct sunlight, you still have to watch out for the UVA and UVB, okay? UVA, I think of it as like aging, so it really penetrates the deeper layers of our skin, which do contribute to impaired function, impaired barriers, and risk of skin cancer. UVB, I like to think of as UV burn, right? So it's kind of like what we experience if we're out too long, we get the redness, the sunburn, and we definitely don't want either of those. So in order to help protect our skin, we have to reapply our sunscreen. So when you do apply your SPF, you want to wait a good 15-30 minutes for it to actually dry off and absorb before you do any type of activity, before you go in the water. I know this is a common question I get as well, is if you're outside already and you're sweating a ton and you're trying to apply SPF but you're just sweating it off, I would recommend bring a separate towel or something to kind of dry off your body and let it cool down and then reapply the SPF because if you're trying to apply it and your skin is like slippery with sweat or ocean water it's not going to be that effective and you may not even be applying the SPF as well as you probably should so dry off with a separate towel and then reapply that SPF. If you know you're not the best at applying even layers of SPF, I would recommend opting for a higher SPF rating. So instead of like an SPF 30, go for an SPF 50 because that'll give you more protection than the SPF 30 if you're not applying an even coat. So go for a higher SPF if you know you're not very good at ensuring every area is covered. If you work in an office setting, so let's just say you aren't outdoors very often, you work inside a building, but you're still exposed to UV rays through a window, I don't find it super, super necessary to reapply a physical lotion all over your body. Like, let's be real, not a lot of us have time during the workday to do that. So instead, you can opt for an SPF powder to touch up your face, your neck. It's translucent. I think Derma E has an SPF powder and different different ones that you can find at Target but that would be better than nothing when it comes to reapplication on top of your makeup or if you're just in an office building all day and I do like applying more SPF to the more exposed areas so if I'm wearing a hat and it covers most of my face 
and I know certain areas are actually still in the sun, I like to put on even stronger SPF on those areas. Alright, so last but not least, I can't end this video without showing y'all some of my favorite SPFs that are all $20 or less and that are fragrance free and friendly to sensitive and acne prone skin. So here are my top recommendations if you are on the hunt for a good SPF with very minimal white cast. So the first one is my tried and true. It's changed my life. It is the Hero Cosmetics for Shield sunscreen, which is an SPF 30. You can buy this at Target, it's only $20, and it has kind of a green tint to it. It absorbs very quickly, and it doesn't leave your skin super oily or super dry. It's just the perfect SPF. I love this one. And because of the green tint, it does help camouflage some of the redness, and kind of gives you a nice even tone to your skin. Highly recommend this one. It's my favorite one. The next SPF that I recommend was only six dollars and you can purchase this at TJ Maxx. This is the Alba Sport SPF 45. This one is great. It's water resistant. It's perfect for if you are going to be outdoors and sweating a lot. Highly recommend this one and it was only six dollars. The next SPF I recommend is by Alba again. This is the Alba Botanica and this is the Sensitive Sheer Shield SPF 45. This was only eight dollars and again, very minimal white cast, if any, and very friendly for sensitive acne prone skin types. And the last SPF that I would recommend, if you are gonna be outdoors, if you do wear makeup, this one works really well underneath it. It is the La Roche Posay Anthelios Dry Touch Clear Skin Sunscreen. This is an SPF 60, which is awesome, especially if you are exposed to UV rays during the day. This one feels like a primer. It's very smooth, velvety, works well underneath makeup, and this was only $20. And you can also purchase this at Target. Those are my top SPF recommendations that I feel a lot of skin types would benefit from. They have very minimal white cast, fragrance free, and they're very affordable considering they're $20 or less. Let me know if you guys have tried these products. Uh, let me know what your favorite sunscreens are. I'm always open to trying new ones. But yeah, I mean the biggest takeaways from this video are for you to find an SPF that works for you, one that you can use on a regular day-to-day -day basis. And you know, some SPF is way better than nothing. So as long as you're applying an SPF that you like, trust me, it counts, it matters, and it's gonna help at least provide some protection from the sun. Your SPF in your makeup, however, is not enough. So don't just rely on the SPF in your foundations or your powders. It's not gonna be enough. Apply an SPF separately and then put on makeup on top of it. I was one of those people that believed the SPF in my makeup was enough and it is not. It does not provide enough protection from the sun. It is, again, the most important step of our skincare routine. Everybody should be wearing an SPF every single day. Everybody needs to wear it, regardless of your skin tone, your skin type. You need to be wearing it every day. I cannot stress that enough. Please do yourself a favor and make sure you are wearing it. And that's pretty much it. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. I hope that it was really informative for y'all. Comment down below other sunscreen tips that you have in mind. I would love to hear it. And if you haven't already, please make sure to check that description box down below. I have links to related videos that you may find helpful or entertaining. I also have a timestamp if you want to hop around this video and I have links to other platforms of mine that y'all can connect with me on. And stay tuned, I post every single Monday. Bye.